This is an art attack? This is an art attack? This is Art Attack! Nice to see you again. Now then, are you one of these people who suffers from broken shelving or lack of space in your bedroom to store your books? What you need is a heavyweight bookend. And here it is. <laughs> Come and have a look at this. Right, you sit there and watch. You might learn something. Take a paper bag that's roughly the same size as a bag of sugar. Now, it can be a, an old sugar bag or even an old flour bag. And three-quarter fill it with pebbles or stones or gravel or anything you can get from your garden. Just something to make it nice and fat and chunky and heavy. Then scrunch your bag closed like that. Take some sticky tape and just tape it closed. Then take an old piece of newspaper and scrunch that up and just scrunch it roughly into an L shape. Now, this is always good stuff to model with, because you can bend it into different shapes. There you are. There's an L shape. And I'm just going to tape it into place like that, and then tape it onto the bottom of my bag, like that. And then do another leg the same way. Tape that onto the bottom of your bag there, like that. Just put the two of them together. It doesn't have to be neat at this point. Just keep modelling it as you're going. And here's a tip. If you can make your legs as chunky as possible and sticking out to the front, then your heavyweight bookend will take the weight of your books a little later on. And then build the rest of the body up, just putting on some paper arms in exactly the same way as you put the legs on. And again, I'll keep saying it, it doesn't have to be perfect at this stage. And then just up a scrunched up ball of paper for the head right on the top with a bit of tape. And when you've got it to that stage, take some lengths of one of my favourite materials, this, loo roll, or tissue paper. And you can just wrap it round the body of your heavyweight bookend like that. Looks like a little cloak at this point, doesn't it? And then mix some PVA glue, equal parts with water, just the old PVA school glue, in the white squidgy bottles, and literally slop it on to your body like that. And you see what starts to happen there? The glue starts to soak into your tissue paper and starts to just bind it to your newspaper. And just cover the whole of your heavyweight body. And it's a good idea to do two layers of this. I won't do it all, just do that bit to show you. And leave it to one side to dry, probably overnight. Oh, and it's dry, it'll look something like that. Look at that. Now, it looks a bit like an Egyptian mummy at this stage, doesn't it? But you notice the PVA glue has gone rock solid and it's made the tissue paper glue to the newspaper and it's all gone rigid there. And I've even put this little dollop of tissue paper on for a nose. And then take some acrylic paint or even poster paint and paint on the detail of your person. Now, it can be anyone you like. I did me and you can do yourself or your favourite pop star or sports personality. But just take some time to paint on your detail, and again, I'm just going to do it quickly here to show you. Just slopping on the colour. There's the red for my sweatshirt. And if you take some time, you should get quite a good result out of it. Well, when I finished mine, it looked something like this. And there he is, a heavyweight bookend. And you can see here, I've put on all the detail, even his sweatshirt. And I haven't gone for a likeness on the face, I've gone for more of a, a cartoon face. But it's a good effect, isn't it? And when I finished the painting, I waited for it to dry, and then I coated it in PVA glue. And when that goes dry, it goes hard and shiny, and it gives it this great finish. And then... You can use it to prop up your books, on your bookshelves, or on your floor. And if you've got lots of books, why not do two of them? One for the other end. And you can even add in extra bits of detail using scrap card or paper just before you put on the loo roll, like that footballer's ball. And what about some wool for the hair? Try it yourself. A heavyweight bookend.
<laughs> Things like that do not scare me in the least. Do you want to see my garlic powder picture? <laughs> ah! Mummy! <laughs> Habbo, bubble, guns made trouble. Especially for the unfortunate grown up that slides into this lot. Yes, time for Get Your Own Back. <laughs> Take a look at this. <laughs> I bet this is the sort of thing that Sue finds in the lunchbox. Look at this. Ah, it's guns, it's mucky and it's slimy. And one of these two ladies is going to end up in this stuff. But before any of that, our four people here have to play some fantastic rounds. That's right, five fantastic rounds. The children have to earn as many points as they can, whilst the grown-ups will try and stop that from happening. Ultimately, it is the child with the highest score that gets that chance to get their grown-up in the gun. Is it going to be our ice skating instructor who finds it funny when you fall, or our dinner lady who serves anything but dinner. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's 200 points each. That means it's anyone's game. Emma, how badly do you want to get your own back on Jill? Very badly. Very badly. This could be the game for you. Great old game. There's plenty of action. It is called wall ball. What Emma has to do is to fire lots of balls at the wall to knock it down. But trying to stop that wall from falling down is our Jill. As you can see, she's got the helmet on and the big gloves. Show off those gloves. Mm. Now, the thing is, she has to try and stop these balls from flying at the wall. And by the way, the yellow bricks in the wall are worth 10 points if they hit the floor. You've got 45 seconds to do as well as you can, Emma. It all starts now! So get ready for... Oh! But by the looks of it, she could be on a high beat for nothing. Oh, to make that top yellow brick wobble. See if we can do it again. There she goes. Oh, she took out a red brick. No points there. That's it. She falls and she fires. The ball bounces off the wall. Go on, get some more yellow bricks down. Oh, she's been very accurate. One ball for one brick. Oh, there goes some more yellow ones. Coming up to the final 10 seconds. Believe me, if you want to win the gun, get those balls out. Oh, yes. <laughs> OK, game over. Emma, well done. That was very good. Not a bad bit of defending there, but I'm going to have to count the yellow bricks. Come with me. And let's take a look at these yellow bricks. Get ready. One there, two, three. Well done there, Emma. You got yourself 30 points. And now it's Jack's turn in the catapult chair. Jack, just to let you know, right, you have to get 30 or more, especially if you want to get Sue in the gun. Do you want that? Yeah! Yes, of course you do. And as for you, you've got to defend that wall because you don't want to go in it, do you? No. OK, get ready in 45 seconds to get that wall down. Starts now! <laughs> He's just shaking the wall a little bit. He's taking the wall out there. Some of it's falling over, but no yellow ones as yet. He goes for it, though. The red bricks are going out. Oh, she knocked that one away. Oh, that one went straight through the wall. No point scored for Jack Edwards yet. That one went past the wall. As the seconds tick away, he has got to make some points. Oh, he's making some, he's making some dents, but there's no yellow ones going down. I don't believe it. Our dinner lady is doing ever so well. She is seriously defending that wall. No points. I don't believe this. Stop. <laughs> no. Oh, no. You got a yellow brick down, but unfortunately, it doesn't count the hotel where you did hey. some serious defending. What do we think of that, everybody? <laughs> yeah, precisely. Oh, Jack, mate. Jack, I feel for you, but come with me. Let's have a count of this. There is a yellow brick there, but because it fell after the hooter, he doesn't get it. Jack, you have scored no points. Go on, give him a round of applause, though. Go on. Oh. Believe me, that is one tough game. But now it's time to take a look at the scores so far. 
Jack of the Yellows has scored 200 points, but in the lead by 30 points is Emma of the Blues with 230 points. Ah, uh, this is the face of a lady who's about to skate on some very thin ice. That's right, Jill is all set for a spill. You all right there, Jill? <laughs> too late now she's here look you're poised over it anyway we've been through these questions emma and i and uh, what we're going to do is ask you three questions now for every question that you get wrong you get taken away from the gunge up and away so it's a case of you're going down but from just how high mm, let's find out here we go which comedy duo presents to me to you on cbbc you know uh, the chuckle brothers she got it right <laughs> You're booing too. All right, she got it right. You stay where you are. Just means you get a closer look at the stuff. All right. All right, next question. Here we go. Pop question. Which band had a chart topping hit in June with their single Mmm Bop? I'll give you a clue. Look, there you are. Ready? Mmm Bop. 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 Mmm Bop. You know what I'm talking about? I haven't got a clue. You haven't got a clue? No, she hasn't got a clue. It is. <laughs> right, what do we do? Right, there you are. You crank it up, that's it. Crank it up, Emma, that's it. Oh, yes. Don't look too happy about it now. Right, third and final question, movie question. Get ready. Which rubber face star appeared in the movie Liar Liar? Jim Carrey. Oh, I don't believe that. She knew exactly what it was. <laughs> yes! True, but the fact of the matter is, she's being such a smart person, I've decided that she's going to have to go all the way up. Would you like that? Yeah. I know you would. Like that. There she goes. Send her up. Go on. Up she goes. Yes, yeah, I know it's not fair, but then again, it's my show, all right? <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, Emma, you've been wanting to get your own yeah. back on this lady for ages because she laughs at you when you fall. There's the big lever. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy the space. Pull it and get your own back. <laughs> I feel really better now. Oh, she feels really better now. We have got something for you right here. Take a look at this. Your Get Your Own Back Clock trophy Thank that you. you can see. And also your very own Get Your Own Back jacket. Please give Emma a huge round of applause. Oh, yes. Sunday morning, my dad'll go spare. Just get down here. Okay, Dad, it's for me. What the heck is it? Why, just literally for that nut a call, eh? I never. Don't give us that. Yours. About the car. The accident, the hospital, everything. It wasn't me, girl. I swear it wasn't me. But only you and me knew. Well, you told someone, haven't you? Oh, you blimmin' little idiot. You stupid, pathetic little twerp. I'm not something you scrape off your shoe, you know. So why do you behave like it? Listen. I have to tag along with Stubbo. He's a thug, all right? He does his over if I go against him. You and your pal. Everything you do is rotten. Ruining things, being felt to people. You mean her, don't you? Gwen. Gwenny Poos. She had a coming to her. She's a right snob. She was only saying what most decent people think. Why'd you have to take everything and make it ugly? Right no. It's just something to do. Is that all you can say? What do you want me to say? 
Just tell us what goes on in that skull of yours. Do you really want to know that? I don't even know why I'm bothering. You don't think a lot of me, do you? As a matter of fact, I think you're very sad. No chance of a date, then. So we're going for chips, then? If you like. Having a pie? If you like. I might have a tarantula in butter. What do you think? All right. Been like this all day. What's the matter? Nothing. It's you and Debbie, isn't it? You've had a fight, haven't you? No. It's nothing like that. It's just. Well. I think I might have let her down. Why? What have you done? I can't tell you, man, don't I? But does Debbie know? No. So what's the problem? Hey, I can't attack it when you're like this, man. Don't you, man? I've, I've done something terrible. I know. You keep telling us that bit. I've got to tell her before she finds out from somebody else. I've got to tell her I was wrong. the Yank Free Zone. We said goodbye to Grayson and Orlando. Serena was very sad to say goodbye to Orlando. And unfortunately, we had to say hello again to my brother Arthur when he came back from his field trip to France. Mum said she'd missed him a lot. And Serena said she hadn't missed him at all. And would he like to go back? At least he didn't have to wear school uniform when he was in France. I bet they'd have made us wear school uniform. Just imagine, Britain's first schoolgirl astronaut. And what have you got on under your pressure suit? Or you trot out into the grid at Silverstone, slide into your Formula One car, pole position. And what have you got on under your fireproof overalls? It's no good. I shall have to expand my horizons. Ha! <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> was the wart relieved that he'll only have to see Emily Jenkinson at tea time. Now he's worried that she might turn up in a pink tutu and ballet shoes straight from the exam and ruin his street cred with Ben and Joe. Now, how about you taking up ballet? I can just see you in a pink tutu. Oh, well, here you are. Pippa to for you. Corey? She's here. Here's that book I was telling you about. Um, I thought you might like to borrow it. Um, are you doing anything on Saturday? Yes. Avoiding the Warts' birthday party. It's him, Ben, Joe and Emily Jenkinson. Emily's been invited to... To make up for the Beatles, yeah, I'd heard. Um, well, no. Um, actually, um, I meant Saturday evening. I wondered whether you'd like to come I to I thought the... you might like a drink, Chris. It's quite a hot day, and I'm sure you've been busy at school. We could go into the garden. Um, no, thanks, Serena. I've got to get back. Lots to do, you know. Um, bye, Natalie. Yeah, thanks for the book. Thank you very much. What else did I do wrong? It's not fair. Chris Kitto comes round to see me, and what happens? Miss Glamour smarms in with pushed-up glasses of cola and sour cream and chive crisps, and he bolts as if he's just seen a gorilla. It's an idea. Serena is a gorilla. I don't know what I'll have to do just to manage a decent conversation with Chris. Maybe I could lock Serena in her bedroom. Natalie, phone for you.
able to find his keeper's house, Neil Buchanan. Once again, to Finders Keepers, this is, of course, the house where you can do all those things that you can't actually do at home. You greens, which animals can balance beach balls on the end of their noses? Pick a number for the storeroom. One. One. Which animals can balance beach balls? <coughs> no, it's not giraffes. Very high beach balls at that. Yellow, same question. Which animals can balance beach balls for the storeroom? Pick a number. Six. Which animals can do it? <coughs> Parrots! <laughs> And they could speak to you while they were doing it. No, it's for the storeroom. Green, same question. Which animals can balance beach balls? Two. Two. Which animals can balance beach balls? <coughs> Wasps! No, they'd sting you if they did. Yellow, same question. Come on. Which animals can balance beach balls on the end of their noses? Pick a number. Seven. Which animals can do that? <coughs> Tigers! No, come on. Greens, your question. Which animals can balance beach balls? Pick a number. Five. Which animals can balance beach balls? <coughs> yes, they can! Brilliant. You get the storeroom and you get yourself 25 points. So, at the end of the first game of Find and Keep, the scores are the yellows, two rooms have 50 points, and the greens have also got two rooms have 50 points. So, grab your helmets, grab your helmets. Greens, you go off. Greens, go and get ready. Yellows, yellows, you come over here. That's it, you come out. Now you know by now. What time is it? Room raiding time. Room raiding time it is. You nearly forgot then, didn't yeah. you? You won't forget when you started. Come on, let's go and raid some rooms. Let's go. What's the joker today, then? Well, they've got to quietly raid the room without waking Frank in order to win these brilliant Finders Keepers kites. Oh, well, that sounds good to me. Yeah. So you're going back to sleep, Frank, Frank and we've not to right, wake you. Yeah. All right, there's Cheers. your teddy. Tuck Cheers. you in there, have that's you got my it. Dummy? I've, I haven't got your dummy. No. What are you talking about? I haven't got his dummy. I haven't got a dummy big enough for you. <laughs> Nighty nighty. <laughs> Ah, oh, here we go then. Here's your clue. Shh, a very quiet raid today. A rubber bag that keeps your feet warm. A rubber bag that keeps your feet warm when you're in bed. Mm. Hot water bottle, he thinks it is. Raid the room very quietly and find out. 30 seconds. One of the tippy toes. Keep the audience quiet. Keep the music quiet. Keep everything quiet. I don't wanna I don't wanna wake sleeping Bruno. That's it, look absolutely everywhere. It could be anywhere. It could be, it could be in that cupboard, it could be in any of the cupboards. Look in all of the cupboards, it could be anywhere. There, there, stop! Stop the clock! Stop the clock, come over here, stop the clock. Brilliant, you get the prize. You got the hot water bottle, you get the 25 points, and I'm gonna put the hot water bottle. Oh, I'm not gonna argue with that. Nighty nighty sleeping beauty. Nice big round of applause for Sleeping Beauty Bruno, I think. <laughs> Let's go and join the greens downstairs. Come on, well done. That's it, you stay here. Oh, I tell you what, I'm not going to argue with him. You won't believe what just happened upstairs. Right, here we go. This contraption sorts your pens and all your other odds and ends. This contraption sorts your pens and all your other odds and ends. Well, it's obviously something to do with a desk, isn't it? Raid the room and find out. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. It could be anywhere, Karen. It could be absolutely anywhere. It could be anywhere. You're very cold over here. You're very cold. How can you get hotter? How can you get hotter? You can get nearer the fire, that's for one thing. You could get... It could be anywhere. You're getting very warm. Yeah, stop the clock. Stop the clock. Well done. Karen got it. Ian got bumped on the head there. Is he still asleep? Yes. Well, let's not wake him up. Now, here we are in the super search, and you know the rules. You've got three minutes to get round all eight rooms. Hidden in every room is an object. Every, every time you find the object, shout out what it says on it, because it'll tell you where to go next. I'll be with you every step of the way with the clues. The more objects you get, the better prize. If you get all eight, you get a nice star prize. Is that all right? Yeah. Great. Oh, great. So on we go. Here's your first clue. These tales of fantasy could be grim. These tales of fantasy could be grim. Storybook. Storybook. Take the room. You've got three minutes. <laughs> quiet, Ray. Right. Very quiet. Yeah, you've got it. Yeah, you've got it. Get it in. It is a ghost fairy story. Go to Mum and Dad's bedroom and now we can go mad. Yeah. Keeps her things handy in this. Mum keeps her things handy in this. Handy, handy, handy. It could be anywhere. 
It could be low, it could be high. You're very warm, Claire. You've gone low, you're very cold now. It's too high. You're not in the wardrobe now, not in the wardrobe. Try on top. Monkeys, yeah, you're very warm. Look above you. Yeah, keep looking. Look inside, look everywhere. What is it? Yeah, it's a handbag. What's it say? Go to kids' bedroom. Let's go to kids' bedroom. Comes over all a quiver when he fires this. Robin Hood comes over all a quiver. Yeah, go on, keep going. Look everywhere. It could be anywhere. It could be in the drawers. But where was he like? Where was he likely to keep it? Robin Hood, where's he likely to keep it? In the bag now. You're cold over there. You're cold over there. That's it. Come over here. It could be anywhere. You're looking in the bag. Yeah, you nearly touched it then. Look absolutely anywhere. Yeah, you're very warm. I can't believe it. You're warm, Carl. It's a quiver, what's it say on it? We've broken it, it says go to the bathroom. Let's go to the bathroom. <laughs> if you want to tell your weight, step on this. If you want scales. to tell... Yes, yeah, scales, where could it be? It could be anywhere. It could be absolutely anywhere. It could be under the cover. You're very warm, Cole. Go for it again, where were you going to go then? No, not in there. Yeah, go for it. It could be anywhere, look. Where's it likely to be? It could be in the top, it could be in the very bottom. Scales, let's go down to the kitchen. Woo. A wobbly port that tastes jolly good. Wobbly jelly. port. Jelly. jelly! Look everywhere. It could be anywhere. Now it's not in the fridge. It's not going to be in the fridge. It could be anywhere. It could be absolutely anywhere. Look at, look everywhere. You're cold over there. Come over here, sir. You get warm the top. Look at both you. That's it. You've got your hands on it. It says go to the study. Mmm, very nice. Go on, go to the study that way. Oh. I'll have that for me supper later. Angle this right to shed some light. Angle this right Hello. to shed... Yeah, it's a lamp, go on. Where are your men more? Look high, look low, look even lower. It could be anywhere. That's it, can keep going. You've got it, it's an angle point lamp. What does it say on it? It says go to the living room. Let's go to the living room. Come on. It says... You need pot luck to find this blower. Pot luck! Oh, it could be a... Yeah, look everywhere, look lower! Look lower! Out of time! Out of time! It was a pot plant that we were looking for. You got six rooms, you did brilliantly. Jeremy, what prize have they got? Try your skills with the latest in computer game technology. Plug it into your TV and you'll be spellbound for hours. Yes, you have won this brilliant computer game! Yeah! Is that good? Yes, 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 I'll give you one tip. It's not a loco computer. It's a good job. Do you enjoy yourselves? Yes, yes. So have we. We hope you have too. We'll see you next time on Finders Keepers. ta for Bye. now. Bye. <laughs>
who you are. You don't know? Well, I knew the world had changed, but do you mean to tell me seriously that you don't know a Samiad when you see one? A Samiad? That's Greek to me. Well, in plain English, then. A sand fairy. A fairy? Oh, of course. I see you are now. It's plain as a pike star. <laughs> oh, please don't go. I didn't know you were a sand fairy. But I knew the minute I saw you that you were much the wonderfulest thing I'd ever seen. Don't go. Can you still give wishes? Of course. Didn't I just give you yours? You said I wish you'd come out. And I did. Oh, please make me have another. Oh, very well. But hurry up with it. I'm tired of you. Come on, let's talk about this. What are you going to wish? Oh, I don't know. Well, you're the oldest. Oh, my. You wish. Oh, I don't, oh, I don't know what to wish. What about the one we're always talking about? What's that? You'll have to be quick. Oh, please. Uh, I wish we were all as beautiful as today. It's no good. I must be out of practice. Thank goodness for that. Oh, please try again. You've already had one wish. If you're going to come bothering me with wishes, I can only manage one a day. Oh, please. I hope it won't hurt itself or crack its skin. <laughs> That's all right. It'll come easier tomorrow. Did it hurt much? Only my poor whisker. Good day. Oh, please, please let it be there. Right. Keep back. This morning. Nothing to boast of. It had rather a restless night. Well, do you feel up to giving wishes? And we'd actually like a little extra wish, as well as our regular one. Well, what is it? We don't want the servants to notice the wishes you give us. <laughs> or kind enough to give us. And thank you very much. Done. What's today's wish? We want to be rich. Beyond the dreams of something or other. Avarice. How much do you want? And will you have it in gold or notes? Gold, please. <laughs> and millions of it. This place full be enough? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Then you'd better get out quick, or you'll be buried in it. Quick, quick. I hope your whisker will be better tomorrow. Oh. Thank you! And much good may it do you! I really should be working today, you know. Why not? I think I've got a bit of a cold coming on. Have you brought a note? No. You're working. Come on. What? Have you got the sign ready? Yes. Where is it? In the shed. Are you painted? Yes. How many coats? Oh, I couldn't find any coats. I used an old pullover. But then I took it off again because it stuck to the paint. Oh, you've spelt it wrong. Hey? There's no N in it. 
But if I can't get an N, will the budgie do? Not an N, an M. Oh. I'll do it myself. That's it. Window cleaners. Brilliant. Right, we'll have to get going because we've got a big round. A big round what? A big wind around. Come on, let's check the gear. Right. I'll go first. OK. I said I'll go first. OK. Right, two ladders. Two ladders. Two buckets. Two buckets. <laughs> two wash ladders. Two wash ladders. One great big airy spider. One great big airy spider. Hey, what? Well, look at that. What? Oh! <laughs> wow! Oh! Oh! Oh, it's okay, it's gone. Oh, God. Let's get the ladders out. Right, get on with it. I wash leather anyway, have you? I might have done. Oh. <laughs> Get some work done. new fully booked and I have to emphasize brand new. new yes we are here for the whole summer so stick with us yep we've got 22 weeks to talk endlessly but we're gonna stop talking now <laughs> hey there's so much coming up we're on till 12 with this in a lot take a look at this yes We've got Dennis and Nasha, and friends, they will be back on Fully Book this week, an adventure called The Competition. I'm making her first, but Either hopefully appearing. not her last visit to Fully Booked is the top babe, Hinder Hicks, at 10.20. And then, of course, we have, after Hinder, we have The Real Review, taking a close-up look at what's new in the marketplace at 10.35. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Two of the team of City Central are with us in room service. And yes, I get all the best jobs. I spent a day with Space James and 11,000 screaming fans at the Radio 1 Roadshow. And boys own a run! Yes! <laughs> you a screaming fan as well? Yeah. So how do you think the show's going so far? I think it's going absolutely great start. fantastically, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm really great crowd, myself. they've woken up now. Yes. And you look fantastic if you don't oh, mind me saying Oh, thanks very much. So do you. What do you want, money? No, just some more makeup, please. Makeup, <laughs> makeup, please. <coughs> what do you think we should do now? 
I think it's time for um, a competition. Do you reckon? It's the start of the show. Let's kick it off with a good one. What about luxury luggage competition? Do you know? I think you've got some. You've got something there. Right. Definitely. Well, all you have to do for luxury luggage is we have this huge suitcase which Chris is wrestling with at it. the moment. And we get every VIP guest to put something inside that suitcase. Is there anything in it just now? Yes, there is already. There? We have a fully booked T-shirt, uh, a monkey, for, your some, for some strange reason. I hope that's not meant to be me. And also a little carrier for your CDs. I think we need more than that, though. We do. Hold on a minute. I'm going to have a word with the guys up here because we have a studio audience and I'm sure that somebody up here has got a decent prize for us. Please come this way. Hello, everybody. Having a good time? <laughs> Enjoying yes. the free Ribena. OK, hello, what's your name? Stacy. Stacy, do you have a good prize for me, Stacy? Yes. What have you got? A wonderful PlayStation card. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. How about that? Stacy has got. I'm just going to disconnect it. You weren't playing it, were you? No, no. Never mind. Thank you very much. And a good game as well. Have you got a good game in there for me? Thank you, Stacy. Oh, she's lovely. Okay, how about that? A top prize here. We're not giving away rubbish. Come on, let's hear it. Thank you. Thank you. And hopefully there's room for it. Not nick that off a child. No, 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 no. A no. PlayStation and a good game. Thank you. There is a game in there as well. VIP lounge. VIP. No. Do you know what it is yet? No. Very informative programme, not. But listen, let's go and have a look inside here because this is the first TV show ever on air that has the green room on the set, so nobody can hide from us. Everybody's here. Hi, guys. Morning. Hey, Boys Zone. I'm not going to talk to Boys Zone at the moment. I'm going to talk to you. Oh, trouble. What, what's your name? Barry Knight. Barry. Barry Knight. And what exactly yeah, is your job? <laughs> what is my job? <laughs> You're laughing. Come on, I'm, I'm in the middle of you. I'm showing you my bum. The artiste coordinator. The artiste coordinator, which means exactly what, Barry? I look after these boys. Ah, we'll... right. Okay, so you must have some gossip on these guys. Gossip. Gossip. Go on. Don't sign any contracts. Just tell us some gossip. Sack. What kind of gossip <laughs> do you want? Well, mm. he gets up late. He's got smelly feet. Something like that. Well, Keith gets up very late. He gets up. We leave at seven o'clock. He leaves at quarter past seven. <laughs> <laughs> and who's got the smelliest feet? Uh, Shane. Shane, is that true? Yeah, I have a smell of them. <laughs> Shane, I'll, I'll see you in a minute, mate. Thanks yeah, very much. Right, yeah. Whoa, an exclusive on Fully Booked. I'm going to get myself a glass of water because uh, it's so hot in this studio. And uh, is that... Sorry, is that... Chris, what are you doing in my... No, it's not your... It's what Gail's you stressing room. What are you doing in Gail's room? Just checking on everything that's OK. Got enough water and that sort of thing. You're not uh, rummaging through her drawers again, are you? Don't worry, Tim. I'll go through yours later. How can you tell where someone comes from by the shape of their ears? And how rude is a piece of paper? <laughs> how can you turn and move in space? Whoa! Money disappear. Invest it in stocks and shares. A very good way of doing it, Mr. Fred, but I can do it another way. How? Right. Let me have a deal with you. If yes. I can make some of your money disappear in front of your very eyes, can I keep it? Yes. Have you a coin, sir? Yes. As long as it's in front of my eyes, my last ten pence. Yeah. The coin on the table, I have no sleeves, so there is nothing up them. Place glass on top of coin. Can you still see it? Yes, mm -hmm. it's still there. Ah. This is the magic. Pour water into the glass. It disappears. Gosh. And the reason why it disappears is because the water bends light. And if you don't believe me, then look at this. Water in a bowl, straight pencil. Place the pencil into the water, and the pencil appears to bend. Straight and bent. And the water in the glass bends the light so much but you can't see the coin at all. So my ten pence is still there? Um, not really, Fred, no. <laughs> How can you move in space? Now, movement on Earth is kind of difficult, and it's the very things that make movement on Earth difficult that make it possible. I'm talking about friction and gravity. Carol, mm -hmm. come with me. I shall need your assistance yeah, on okay. this. Yeah. Come with me to simulated space. Now, step yourself up onto simulated space. Oh, right. I, yep, I've simulated space here with a frictionless turntable. Now then, okay. attempt to stop yourself. <laughs> stop! <laughs> I can't stop, guys. Okay. okay, well, try and go the other way, then. <laughs> OK, 
can't do that either, can you? Ah, no. I will help. Allow me to stop you. Now, right. OK? Stable? Yeah. Yes. Stable. Hair out of mouth. <laughs> Take hold of this bicycle wheel. Now, you wouldn't have thought that a bicycle wheel would be much help in space. No. But indeed it is. Ready? Yeah. OK, now twist the bike wheel. Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh! Twist God. it the other way. And stop. Yeah. Oh. Can you stop yourself? <laughs> Yes. Right. Now, this is actually how satellites control their position in space. They have three, not bicycle wheels, but gyroscopes, which work in different planes, and that controls their position relative <laughs> to where they are, as it were. And that's all very well for turning on the spot, but ah. what about if you want to go somewhere? All right, Chuck, let me take this from you. And that's right. why I had the gloves on. Right. <laughs> take hold of this rocket, or in our case, um, fire extinguisher, really. All right. Yes. Now, there is a law which says for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So, if the gas from this cylinder goes that way, then you should go that way. But being as you're standing on a turntable, you'll go round and round. Fire it up. I'm going to go this way. <laughs> Are you ready? And if Carol was really in space, she'd carry on spinning forever and forever. Now, so much for going around forever and ever in space. I'll now simulate straight lines in space using my friction-free skateboard and this jetpack of compressed air. And this should propel me forward. What? Well, how rude is a piece of paper? Well, it depends what you write on it, I suppose. No, 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 no. It depends what's, what's drawn on it, <laughs> well, possibly. <laughs> this is a plain piece of paper, is it not? Mm. I can make this piece of paper rude by doing this. Take a pencil, place it in one corner, I wrap that corner around it and roll right to the very end. Once you've done that, loosen it slightly and the pencil drops out. Secure that with a piece of sellotape and... It's not very rude. Not very rude at the moment. This is the clever bit. At one end, take a pair of scissors and cut from the V to one side and open it out and then cut from the V to the other side so that you end up with an arrowhead. Mm -hmm. Bend that arrowhead upwards, like that. Place the other end in your mouth and suck gently. Yes, that is rude. <laughs> <laughs> it is rude, is it not? Now, the longer you make your piece of paper, the lower the raspberry. Thank you. The shorter it is, the higher the raspberry. And I <laughs> think we you. ought to have the rude paper symphony, if we will, okay. gentlemen. Mm -hmm. After three, a one, a two, suck. <laughs> That's how rude a piece of paper can be. event for, for many yeah. hours, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Coming live from yeah. Shepton oh, Mallet. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. You've excuse ruined me. it. <gasps> no, we're just brought on holiday for a few days and they're getting yeah. new hosts in. Nice sorry, sorry, but yeah. live and kicking wouldn't be anything what? without me and yeah. Jamie. Would it? <laughs> Would it, crew? No, we got presents. Oh, we got presents. Oh, Mitch, what's coming out? Oh, by the way, Mitch, yeah. you, you and I... What have you got, Mitch? I bought you that. Oh, I want that. Let me try that out. Oh, that's very nice. Really, thank you, Jamie and Zoe. Hello, then. Here's what we've got on the show today. We go behind the scenes at five past nine with young Katie. Also, we go clowning around with Chucky at 9.15 in the first of four episodes this morning of Rugrats. Uh, the Witch coming from a soggy water world at 9.30. What are they like? And then, hello, 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 it's uh, Heartbeat's Jason Durr. will be on the beat at uh, Durr 9.50. Uh, moonwalking problems coming up in Keenan and Decal at 9.55. 
And what else we got? Ah, another talented teacher tries to outdo last week's Mr. Pedley at 20 past 10. Dancing themselves dizzy at 10.30. Our recently fired new hosts, that's uh, Mel and Sue. Then we'll be prowling through the jungle at 11 in search of Simba in Electric Circus. At 11.35 this morning, Zoe wheels out another trio of uh, B-list celebs in <laughs> Miss Oh Maybe. And also today, what about this? We've got actress, singer, and all-round rock legend, really. Cher joined us on Live and Kicking, and she takes up this week's hot seat. Oh, marvellous. Oh. Oh, it's spaghetti. This and is this is good. Hello? <laughs> Shut up, I can't turn around. <laughs> wait, wait a minute, we're live on telly. Somebody bring in a telly. Bring in a telly. Oh, Let's yeah. have a look. Yeah. Look, it's Cher! <laughs> You can't be our caretaker, can you? You're, you're Cher! Yeah, are you? Yeah. Are you? You're Cher! You're Cher, everyone! Cher! Cher. Cher. Yes, I'm Cher! Yes, I'm Cher! So, um... Cher! Cher. Cher. Um, how can we help you settle in as caretaker? Well, I, I could I could use a lift to, to work every day. Oh, that's not a problem. I've got a scooter. Where do you live? America. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We may have to go halves on petrol. No problem. Yeah, look, look, Cher, I mean, you, you're an international superstar. I mean, I can't help wondering how much Jamie the Head Boy has agreed to pay you to be our caretaker. Well, look, he wrote it down right here. This is my salary. <laughs> I'll tell you what, for that, for that money, love, you're going to have to bring your own sandwiches. <laughs> well, if there's a problem, why don't we just fire him? Okay. Yeah! yeah. Thanks very much. But you know, I'm sure that it's going to be okay because, I mean, Jamie wrote this down himself. Oh, oh right. Did he? Yeah. 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 Hey, hey, Jamie. Hey. Hey. Hello, Hello, Jamie. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> I'm Cher. All right. Yeah. 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 It's your life. Yeah. 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 For goodness sake. I won't be I can't help yeah. wondering. How, how much have you told Cher? She's going to get. Uh, she's getting two pound fifty, but she has to bring her own sandwiches. No, I made that quite clear. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. What's that? Oh, that, that's my phone number. Sorry. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> anyway, maybe if you want to give me a call any time, you should. Uh... <laughs> no, come in, drop in for help me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! 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 Oh. Oh. This week's giving it to Cher. Who next week? <laughs> Here's the gary screens waiting to fight through guns to get those eyeballs. Playing against the horrible orange team, skulls at the ready. <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't happen to a dog. <laughs> All they have to do is escape from the dingy dungeons. <laughs> First one to pull the lever at the end wins their team an eyeball. Are you ready? Go! <laughs> Green gruesome got there just in time and won an eyeball. One nil to the greens. <laughs> Now, underneath this trap door are the creepy corridors. You two have been selected by your team to enter this creepy maze blindfolded. <laughs> your only way out is through the green gate, and your only way out is through the orange gate. 
the first to find their way out wins three eyeballs for their team. So, blindfolds on, listen out to your teammates, they are trying to guide you, and there you go. Steak tonight, Boris, eh? Yeah. Nice little raw steak. Oh, I didn't know who was going to be first out of there, but finally the Orange Horror beat the Green Gruesome and won three more eyeballs. So that makes the scary score seven to the Oranges and still only one to the Greens. Oh, well. Come on in, come on in. It's horrible, it's smelly, it's disgusting. This is the Stinky Sink. It was built over a hundred years ago by my great great granddad Ebenezer Johnson to wash his face in. And here it is. Well, what's left of it? Your task is to find the rest of his skeleton and piece it back together. Just like that. And what a fine figure of bones he is. And please remember, the more bones you build, the more prizes you get. But watch out for the sloppy sewage. <laughs> You've got 60 seconds, starting from now. Go get in, quick. Oh, quick, dig around. She found anything. pieces in the correct order, so here are your prizes. Each of them has won. A pair of inline skates with ski-style buckle and high-specification wheels, with a complete set of super safety equipment and flashing nightlight. A full-colour games system with games for all levels of play. Oh, well wicked. Thank you very much, Boris. And I've got the best prize of all. You get to remain guests here at Terra Towers forever. <laughs> <laughs> With the Dora, we adore her. Doing things in her very special way. With the Dora, nothing's sure. You're the one that can brighten up my day. Hello, Miss Adora. Oh, hello, Tatty Bogle. Lovely flowers, eh? Oh, very nice. Here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, hello there. Nice to see you. Do you like my flowers? Now, if I was a proper wizard instead of being a trainee wizard, I could magic a spell to make the flowers pick themselves. <laughs> oh, well. 
Botheration! They're arguing again! Leave it to Wizardora to sort them out. Wizardora! Oh, oh she's gone. Oh, no! Those crows are after my seeds again. I suppose I, I should really try and scare them away. Oh, maybe later. <laughs> Hello, Tatty Bogle. Pippa, you brought me a parcel. Sorry, the parcel's not for you. It's addressed to Wizardora. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> see you. Bye. Quiet, draw people. There's nothing wrong with being a coat hanger, Hangle. But I am more than a coat hanger. I'm a cloak hanger, which is quite different. I am responsible for hanging your magic cloaks. I am Cliff Hangle. Cloak hanger extraordinaire. <laughs> you look more like an ordinary coat hanger to me, Squire. Coat <laughs> <No>, hanger. <laughs> I am not. Now see what you've done. That was my friend Hangle. He helps me keep the kitchen tidy. He hates being called a coat hanger. Go 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 Will you stop teasing Hangle? And these are the draw people. Hmm. Top, <laughs> sticky, and bottom. Oh. They're a real nuisance. You wait and see. <coughs> oh, sorry. And this is very old fish. So called because he's very old and very wise. I've swum in all the oceans and seas in the world and seen all there is to see. <laughs> you, Mr. Dora. Oh, uh, uh, can I have the string on your parcel? Oh, of course you can. Help yourself. Oh, thanks. Oh, Tatty, wait. Is that parcel for me? Oh, <laughs> oh yes, uh, it says uh, Dizawara. No, I mean, uh, uh, Wizardora on the front, yes. Oh, hand it over then. I'll unwrap it and then you can have the string. <laughs> Sticky, you're the nearest. What's in the parcel? Can we eat it? Is it something delicious? I mean, it doesn't smell like food. Food? Did you say food? There you go. Ah, oh, thank you, Wizardora. <laughs> It's just what I need for one of my intentions. Uh, I mean, uh, inventions, yeah. Uh, just you wait till you see it. <laughs> now, you've already met Tatty Fogel. He takes care of my garden. He's a scarecrow, really. But his trouble is he's so nice, he doesn't scare the crows. <laughs> oh, let's see what this is. Careful, Wizardora. It's probably dangerous. These magic things do make me so nervous. I wonder who it's from, though. Oh, of course. It's from my father, the wizard. <sighs> wow! My real first one! Yeah. Wizardora, be careful. It's going to explode! <laughs> Quiet, Dog Dormat. It's all right. Lie down, boy. It's perfectly safe. That's my doormat. He thinks he's a dog. Of course you're a dog. Good boy.